what's up y'all today's video we're working on my truck so there's a bunch of rusty holes all in the truck bed no protective layer nothing like that so i'm going to show you how i took it from that to this without having to do any welding or anything like that no professional bed lining anything like that this is 100 percent diy that you can do yourself so let's go check it out all right i cur currently have the tailgate off and as you can see i've got a bunch of black spray paint looking stuff on it this is a rust converter that i got from lowe's that like you spray on and it's supposed to convert the rust from not rust to solid again uh, i kind of just did this to buy time I, I will put in some pictures uh in here somewhere of what it looked like you know before i sprayed it but i mean you get the gist and i and I wasn't sure if I was going to make a video out of this, so I just kind of decided, you know, all right, this is some decent content, I'm sure. So I'll just go ahead and show people what I do here to try and fix this. But so this is kind of like the before. I didn't grind too much. I kind of took a hammer and, and a chisel and kind of chiseled out the holes or like, you know, where the rust was most seen and then exposed more of it, got it to where it was solid again. I haven't taken a wire wheel or sandpaper or anything to it really yet. This is what you're seeing right now is just to kind of buy me time until I could get the materials together to do it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I got the tailgate off right now. I'm just going to go get some soap and water and get in here. I've got some dirt just jammed up into those corners and stuff and kind of there's some surface dirt. I'm just going to kind of clean this up while it's still on the frame. It'll make it a little easier than when it's floating in the air, I think, when I can just kind of walk on it and all that. So. Okay, so this is what we got going on here. I built this little contraption here to rope up the truck bed once I get all the connection points off. We're gonna lift it up, get it off the frame. Since it's just me, this is kind of like the most viable option. From what I saw online, you could get a few people and like kind of lift it up and just set it down, but it's just me out here. So this is what I found online. Some guys kind of doing stuff similar to this. Just some four by four I had laying around, slapped it together, you know, 30, 30 degree, 60 degree cut, connected it all. Just those there for extra. So you've got to take out, as far as I'm aware, six uh, bolts from the bed, through the bed frame to the, the actual frame itself. Gotta take off these four bolts here surrounding the gas uh, tank access here. And then the wiring, there's some connectors down here to disconnect these, these tail lights here. And then that should be it. There, I think there might be another one maybe for the towing down there. But otherwise, as far as I'm aware currently, that's all we got to do. So let's get into that. So these last couple, this one and this one in the back there, were a bitch to get out. I can see why now. Literally the thread is totally rusted off on this section right here. So I'm probably going to have to replace these. I was already kind of thinking about it since I almost stripped that one out. But I'm sure they come in a set. And the other ones aren't looking too bad, but besides the one I stripped out, but these two are, those two are really bad. I forgot to mention too, these are T55. That's the size of this, if you're wondering, for those bolts that go into the frame. And then also for the gas tank side, these are 10 millimeter. You'll be four of those you need to pull off. One more thing I forgot to mention here. So you do have to take this arm off here that is where your feeder for your gas tank comes in. Uh, this holds that line in place. So there's two bolts here. Those are 12 millimeters deep. Uh, you have to use a deep socket to get to those. All right, another thing I had to do was take off this plastic cover here, take off the license plate, take off the plastic cover and take out these light connections because those are uh, connected to the frame and wired in with the harness running along through here. So to get this through, you gotta take all these plastic bits, you push them, squeeze them, push them up.
All right, so arguably one of the most stressful parts of this whole thing is done now. <laughs> got the truck bed off, got the frame exposed, starting to assess to see how bad things are. Uh, it actually doesn't look like the underside of this is as bad as I thought, at least as, the, as far as the bed goes. But the, uh, yeah, the frame, frame's looking a little rough, but again, nothing's going all the way through. It looks like it's just kind of some surface rust so check it out so we got some stuff flake in here that's not a big deal some flake is sheer yeah i think i think we're pretty good right here is a little flaky i mean this could probably these leaf spring things could probably all be replaced to make it run smoother or ride smoother but i mean all in all it looks pretty good it's not not near as bad as I've seen some of these. I mean, if you're familiar with these first gen tundras at all, you know how bad they can get. So luckily I think we're within reason. I'm gonna clean this thing up too, clean the frame up. That was part's kind of bad there. Doesn't look, again, not too bad. Little, little separation going on there. That's not ideal in that separation point, but maybe over here. But yeah, we're gonna, we're just gonna try and clean it up as much as we can. I mean, this thing's almost 20 years old now. So we're not looking for, per for perfect, we're looking for time, you know, more, we're looking to buy ourselves some more time with this. So yeah, woo. truck bed frame at least this section for the most part pretty well scrubbed uh, I'm not going for perfect I'm going for better so I got most of that hit with some abrasion knocked off all the loose stuff as best I can sort of go in and hit it all with that rust converter everywhere I can see we did find a new problem uh, my muffler is totally trashed uh, on the top end so we'll have to get that replaced but We'll get that done sometime soon, I'm sure. But yeah, we're just gonna focus on getting this all coated with the rust converter. Hopefully that does it and helps it out, but figure while I've got it off, I might as well do that. truck beds back on definitely went a little rougher setting it down than I thought it would but it's on there it's in the right position more or less so I'm gonna take that as a win and yeah we're gonna get to sanding and prepping all this stuff get it ready for fiberglass 
sanding some more, and eventually the bed liner. So I did get some new bolts. Got these off Amazon. They look pretty much the exact same, besides they're silver. And yeah, we're gonna wait till probably I get the fiberglass and the bed liner sprayed in and all that type of stuff. Wait till the very end before I even bother putting these in. Okay, so we're ready to start putting some fiberglass on these holes. Uh, I did a couple of test spots already to see if I got the mixture right because I've never used this particular product. And it's actually only my second time ever doing fiberglass at all. So I got a couple of spots going. They seem to be setting up pretty well. I did have another hole that I thought was good to go, but I saw some more rust. I started picking at it, found a lot more rust. So I had to cut and grind and get that one prepped. But otherwise, it's pretty much ready to go. So it's getting really hot out, and I, it does say it has like a certain temperature you're supposed to apply this stuff in. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm just going to start throwing stuff at it because I don't want to have my, my brush set up and then not be able to use it anymore. So we got uh, one, two, three, four more holes to cover, uh, and then we're going to do multiple layers of the fiberglass on it. Probably like three, to be honest. Uh, I want it to be really thick on there, so we're going to go and start chucking fiberglass at it. So this is what I'm using here. I've got this like boat polyester resin and then this really thick uh, fiberglass mat. I'm not using the cloth, I'm using the mat. And like I said, three or four layers probably of that stuff on there. So I think for the most part, I'm pretty much done with the fiberglass. I did three layers in some parts that holes that weren't so big. And then the really bad ones, I ended up doing four layers. Uh, I was reading online on a couple of forums on whether or not I'm supposed to do them when they're completely dry between layers. If it's good to go wet to wet. I, I wasn't really sure. Cause like I said, this is my second time even doing fiberglass. This is the biggest amount of fiberglass I've ever done. So I did see some people on some boat forums saying that they do up to two layers wet to wet. And then some people were saying that you want to wait till it's tacky, but not dried. So I kind of tried to play between the two. The, the, the second layer I did from the first one, I did two layers back to back with wet. And then this fourth layer I put on on some of them, I waited till it was tacky and then put a fourth layer. So we'll just see how that holds up. It seems to be doing what it's supposed to. Again, I'm not a fiberglass expert. This is completely DIY. So yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at with it. We'll wait till it dries. We're gonna come through and sand everything because we got to do that anyway to prep it for the, the liner that we're spraying in. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna wait another 24 hours or so at least. Hopefully the rain holds off and then we'll get to sanding. It's finally time, we're here. We're to hopefully the last day of this project. Uh, I'm about to start getting in there and doing some sanding, doing some surface prep, kind of knocking off the extra edges and maybe see if I can taper out that fiberglass at all. It might be ambitious to think that, but I'm gonna try and get that done. Uh, then we're taping, uh, gonna clean it with a little bit of acetone Try not to hit the fiberglass with that. I feel like that's not gonna like the acetone. So we're gonna probably just do everywhere else but the fiberglass spots with that. And then tape it and we're gonna spray. Hopefully that all goes super smooth and we're done before lunch. Whew. All right, pretty sure the sanding's all done for the most part anyway. 
definitely was a little harder than I thought to taper out the fiberglass. I kind of knew that was going to be uh, maybe not work the way I wanted to. And it kind of was getting a little thin in some areas. So I'm definitely not going to be able to taper it quite as well as I think. Hopefully with the spray on uh, bed liner, it's, the texturing on it might hide the patches. Not super concerned with the finished look as long as it functions right. So that's kind of the whole theme of this whole project is to make it uh, work for what I want to and not look completely awful. So if we can hit that mark, we're doing good. So for the most part, you know, we just want to try and rough up the surface, I guess. Uh, get into all the crevices and everything, kind of knock off the clear coat. This thing was in pretty rough shape already. There was stains and rust spots and dents and all sorts of stuff already. So it's not like it's going to be beautiful. Like a lot of these videos I see of guys putting in truck liners and their brand new beautiful trucks. This is not that video. So we've got everything pretty much scuffed up. You know, wanted to make sure we got, we did everything with the oscillating sander. I used 80 grit just to knock everything off and especially on the fiberglass that was important to do that and then we took a just a piece of sandpaper and went in and got all the crevices the oscillating sander could not get to uh, made sure we did the truck bed as well so now we're going to go through and tape off or we're going to clean off the dust off of this stuff so the tape sticks better and then go through and tape and then acetone and then let all that dry and then hopefully we're spraying so getting some of the taping done here uh, one thing I saw online, a little trick, is to take some of this paper and ball it up and like kind of fill this gap with it instead of having to use a bunch of tape and everything. And then also I'm going to go grab some uh, aluminum foil to wrap these things. These need to be replaced anyway. They're, they're obviously uh, rusting and fraying, but you know, for now, so it closes as it should, we're going to wrap this in aluminum foil and stuff that with paper. Okay, so I was going to use acetone to clean the truck bed because I'd seen other people use that. Uh, as soon as I was looking on the container, it says it thins fiberglass resins, epoxies, and adhesives. So I'm not going to use that. I was going to try and dodge around the fiberglass patches, but I, I'm just not even going to risk it with that. Also, I couldn't find my disposable gloves that I thought I had. So we're just going to skip that and I went and saw a lot of people were just using de degreasers to prep after sanding. Uh, I don't have a degreaser unfortunately and I'm stuck here with my truck. The battery is dead now for some reason. We'll figure that out later but not like I could drive it in the current state anyway. Uh, so I had to whip together a makeshift degreaser of white vinegar, baking soda and some dish soap. Uh, hopefully that does the trick so we're going to go around and clean it with that now instead. Final coat, done. Uh, you know, that last bottle that it came with really is important, I feel like. I could have just been fine with the three bottles probably that it came with, but I'm glad I used that fourth one because you just kind of use that to touch up the little thin spots you found. And then also, uh, like I showed before, you you would kind of pepper it out and and kind of like feather that, that trigger on there. And then that's, those splatters are what gives it that texturing and it looks really good now with the texturing i'm pretty happy with it overall um, it's leaps and bounds better than it was before with the holes in it and no protection at all so overall i say it's a success and yeah definitely recommend doing it we'll do a follow-up on this in the future and see how it's holding up and everything see how my fiberglass patches are doing see how the bed liner is doing but overall it's pretty good i think
Well, that's that. You guys stuck around this long in the video. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something along the way. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to ask down below in the comments. I will try and put everything I used uh, as far as material, even references, stuff like that. I'll try and put that all in the description. And yeah, hopefully once this stuff holds up, we're gonna see how it goes. I'm planning on being pretty rough on this truck bed, you know, hauling gravel and doing all sorts of, you know, just stuff that will be rough on it. We'll see how the fiberglass holds up. We'll see how the bed liner holds up. Hopefully we don't get any more rust and maybe we'll do a follow-up video in the future, like I said. So if you wanna see that, maybe consider subscribing and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks guys. Peace.